Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Caitlin Burke. The director of the CIA warns the Islamic State has the capabilities to conduct more terrorist attacks in the days ahead. How do we prevent future attacks like the one this week in Orlando? Gary Lane reports Washington is divided on the best way to combat terror. An urgent and frightening warning from John Brennan on Capitol Hill Thursday. The CIA director said more Orlando-like attacks are possible. We judge that ISIL is training and attempting to deploy operatives for further attacks. ISIL has a large cadre of Western fighters who could potentially serve as operatives for attacks in the West. He said the Islamic State is exploring a variety of means for infiltration, like joining the flow of refugees into Western countries, using smuggling routes and commercial travel. Democrats and Republicans want to prevent future terrorist attacks in the United States, but they're miles apart on how to do that. Democrats want tougher gun laws. Republicans want the president to take tougher action against ISIS and Islamic extremists. President Obama's critics say his open border approach to immigration and poor foreign policy decisions are to blame for terrorist attacks like the Orlando massacre. Arizona Senator John McCain said the president was, quote, directly responsible for the mass shooting because he withdrew all U.S. troops from Iraq in 2011. That led to the rise of ISIS. McCain later backed off from that statement, saying the president's policies led to the attack. Meanwhile, the Senate is set to vote on new gun control legislation Monday. Democrats are advocating for a policy called no fly, no buy, meaning that anyone on a terror watch list should be banned from purchasing a weapon. There's no reason why a suspected terrorist ought to be able to buy a firearm that can kill so many innocent people. But under current law, the FBI is already notified when terror suspects try to buy weapons. House Republicans say they don't plan to consider new gun legislation. Is going after the Second Amendment how you stop terrorism? No. Donald Trump criticized President Obama and told supporters in Dallas Thursday that he'll protect American gun rights. To a large extent, he's blaming guns. And, and I'm going to save your Second Amendment, folks. I'm going to save your Second Amendment. Earlier in the week, Trump said if more people at the Orlando nightclub had guns, fewer people would have died. During his visit to Orlando Thursday, President Obama scoffed at that suggestion. The notion that the answer to this tragedy would be to make sure that more people in a nightclub are similarly armed to the killer defies common sense. And as the president and vice president placed flowers at the Orlando Memorial, a Christian from Illinois drove 1,200 miles to place 49 crosses at the site, the name of a victim on each one. My message today is love your brother, Amen. love your neighbor. Thank you. Don't judge him. Just offering hope in a very hopeless situation. Gary Lane, CBN News. A U.N. investigative panel is asking more countries to step in and stop what they're calling genocide by the Islamic State. ISIS is targeting the Yazidi community in Iraq and Syria, committing crimes such as beatings, rape and torture. That's according to the BBC. Although the findings are not new, the Council of Inquiry on Syria released its first report specifically looking at the Islamic State's crimes against the Yazidis. The 41-page report says ISIS still holds over 3,200 Yazidi women and children. Slave markets in Syria are selling Yazidi women and girls exclusively to ISIS fighters. And they've even begun selling these women and children online. More than 50 diplomats from across the State Department are calling for a new U.S. policy on Syria, including more direct action against Syrian dictator Bashar Assad. The officials have all signed an internal document advocating for U.S. military action to pressure Assad into accepting a ceasefire and engaging in peace talks. One of the officials responsible for the document said it was written in response to five years of failed policy, saying Assad has not faced consequences for his actions. A British lawmaker is dead after she was gunned down Thursday outside a library in England. Joe Cox was brutally attacked in the street Thursday afternoon. The police arrested a 52-year-old man at the scene, and he's currently under investigation. It's unclear if Cox was deliberately targeted or if there was another motive. The attack comes just one week before a referendum vote on whether Britain should leave the European Union. Both sides have halted campaigns out of respect. 
America's second largest religious group wants its members to welcome refugees. At its annual meeting this week, the Southern Baptist Convention approved a resolution on the resettlement of refugees in the United States. The resolution said, Scripture calls for and expects God's people to minister to the sojourner. We encourage Southern Baptist churches and families to welcome and adopt refugees into their churches and homes. When they come here to the United States, we don't want to turn our back on them. We want to minister to them. We want to help them. We want to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them, and we want to advocate for them. The Southern Baptist Convention also voted to condemn the Confederate battle flag. SBC representatives encouraged those who still fly the flag to stop as a way to promote racial harmony. Cross told CBN News the church in general gives an answer to racial issues that America doesn't provide. We are unified in Christ across races, across socioeconomic groups, as America divides and, and uh, fights over these issues, the church can have a unified voice to say there is peace in Jesus, there's uh, sacrificial love in Christ. The Southern Baptist Convention also voted to stand against boycotts of Israel, urged members to exercise their right to vote, and voted to oppose women being eligible for the U.S. military draft. North Korea may have doubled its number of nuclear weapons in just the last year and a half. That's according to a report from the Institute for Science and International Security in Washington. The London Daily Mirror reports the group estimates that Kim, Jong Kim Jong-un could have added six or more weapons by expanding his country's nuclear production. North Korea promised in 2013 to start up all of its nuclear facilities again, and said last month that it will build up its nuclear weapons capability. President Obama maintains that no challenge poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. But others warn the U.S. faces far more serious threats, including an attack that could result in the death of millions. Dale Hurd has more. Imagine one day your electricity suddenly goes out, gadgets stop working, and cars come to a standstill on the roads. And what if the power grid remained dark for months or even years, resulting in millions of deaths across America? That's a nightmare scenario many experts worry could become a reality if an electromagnetic pulse bomb, or EMP, detonated 100 miles or so above the Earth, right over North America. Uh, that's where you would basically wipe out our electric grid and any instruments that use uh, computer chips. You think of uh, people that have uh, heart devices for their hearts, or you think about gas pumps, and you think about all electronic uh, transfers. You think about the air aircraft that are flying. The uh, banks the, uh, would be closed down. The electronic transfer of well, money you wouldn't would be able to get food out of the grocery store. You wouldn't be able to. Uh, Use your credit card. Who could attack us that way? In February, North Korea announced it launched a weather satellite, a move the United States and other nations quickly condemned, as an attempt to further develop long-range missile capability. Some speculate that North Korea already possesses weapons designed to emit high levels of electronic frying gamma rays, rather than create a big explosion. Hey, to to just you know this gloom and doom, but it is terrifying because they have the means now. They've they've been launching the intercontinental ballistic missiles. They can certainly do it. I'm a space architect. I work with NASA and, and the aerospace programs. And you have now a country, a rogue country like North Korea, working very closely with Iran, by the way. And, and mm -hmm. Iran now has also the ICBM capability to do the same. Despite what some see as a real and present danger, the Obama administration appears indifferent to the threat, focusing instead on what it deems the biggest problem we face, man-made climate change. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Coming up, a unique Father's Day gift you probably haven't thought of. We'll explain what it does on today's digital download after this. Father's Day is this Sunday, and you might still be looking for a unique gift. Instead of getting Dad another tie, how about a tech gift that will get him out of the house and under the hood of his car? Today on Digital Download, Caleb Kinchlow has three must-have gifts for techie and not-so-techie fathers. What do you get the man who has everything? 
How about something to help him save money on his car? Every vehicle since 1996 has what's called onboard diagnostics, or OBD for short. Cars are now basically computers on wheels, and the OBD stores all technical information as a code in the engine control unit, similar to a computer hard drive. If something goes wrong with your vehicle, you can handle it. And you don't have to be a techie or a grease monkey. All you need is your smartphone, and these devices are plug and play. There are plenty of these little guys on the market at different price points. Today we're looking at B-Peak Mini OBD2 Diagnostic Scanner. It'll cost you about $12 on Amazon. The reader connects to your phone via Bluetooth. Once it's plugged into your car's OBD outlet, download one of the free apps. After it's connected, you are given access to all kinds of information. You can see everything from fuel economy, voltage, engine load, air intake, the list goes on. Disclaimer, you won't become a certified mechanic, but at least you can feel like one and save some money. We have two other great gift ideas, including a device to help you keep track of your favorite items and a toothbrush you can share with your entire family. Don't worry, it's better than it sounds. Just visit cbn.com slash digital download or if you're watching this online, click the link under the video. For digital download, I'm Caleb Kinchlow. Have a happy Father's Day. Up next, the ladies of Duck Dynasty are making jewels in more way than one. See how Missy Robertson's faith-based company is helping women in need. Fans of Duck Dynasty know Missy Robertson as more than just the wife of Jace. They know she's also a devoted mother with a deep sense of faith. Recently, Missy put those skills to work when she launched a jewelry line. There she handcrafts works of art and helps women along the way. This is not something that I ever saw coming down the pipe at all but it's something that God took and said, you know what, I'm gonna make this larger and broader and more encompassing than you ever dreamed. For over a year, Missy Robertson and her friend Kelly Block entertained the idea of starting their own jewelry line that would be inspired by the outdoors. Kelly and I, when we started this, it was basically for what I thought would be women like me, long before Duck Dynasty, when I needed to go to work every day and to help my family with income. But God has different plans. The two are still brainstorming ideas when Kelly went to a Bible study, a Celebrate Recovery group led by Kay Robertson, Missy's mother-in-law. All these women that would come together for this Bible study, they would always be talking about, God, just, you know, I'm cleaning this person's house, and does anybody know of a job I can do? I'll do anything. That's when Missy and Kelly realized that God had another plan for their business, to make it into a ministry to help women in desperate need of a second chance. We wanted to give women in our community a new purpose. And these women come from all walks of life. The ones who just cannot find a job because they've been incarcerated, they could be coming out of homelessness. We also have some who were rescued out of the sex trafficking industry right here in our town. This is going to be a hard ministry. These women are going to need a lot of love and a lot of attention. And I had to really think and pray about that, say, am I ready for this? I took two entire days and just did nothing but pray about it. And at the end of those two days, I said, I'm ready. They decided to call their new ministry and jewelry line Laminin. And once they found a place, they were ready to start hiring women to make the pieces. Our first two employees that we hired came from an organization called Project 41. And it's an organization that rescues women and children from the sex trafficking industry. Then I called Miss Kay. I said, do you think you know of some more women who might need a job? And she rattled off to me six names, just one by one by one. And she said, let me call them. The next day she called me, she said, all six of them want that job. After I graduated high school, I started doing drugs and selling drugs. I had been arrested in Colorado Springs for some very bad things. And uh, 
I remember being in that little bitty hole in the wall, like a little bitty cell, and looking out this little tiny window and it was snowing outside. I realized that I couldn't go on the way I was. That darkness, that emptiness, completely feeling alone, that's how I felt then. And now it's just peace. Being in an environment where you're not judged at all, you're loved for who you are, no matter where you've been, and they look at you for what Christ has done in you, not for what you've done. I have an anxiety disorder. Things that seem so common and everyday for other people are actually challenging for me. And there are some times when it's just all I can do to just get out of bed and face the day. And um, when I remember, hey, I'm about to go spend time with my sisters. It's like a light switch. I say to Jesus, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm grateful for the women that I know that are gonna be there. I'm grateful for the job. It gives me a sense of purpose. A prostitute, a crackhead, a terrible mom. I've always been told I was never gonna to amount to anything. I've always felt like the black sheep because of my past, because people are always looking at me. They know what I've done. I've never felt that way when I walked into Lebanon. It's an outpouring of love every time you walk through the doors. I feel like I belong. If you're like me, I wasn't around anything like this growing up. I don't know what it's like to be raised by an alcoholic father. I don't know what it's like to be caught in that drug world where you will do anything, say anything, sell anything, including your children, to get that next high. But when you meet any of these women and you look at them eye to eye, you realize you have so much in common <laughs> because they just want love. They believe it's God's love that brought them together and keeps them together. In fact, it's all in the name. Laminin is a very pretty name, but it also signifies that God is holding all of us together. Laminin is a protein molecule. There are thousands of them in our bodies. They hold everything together. When you take that protein molecule and you put it under a microscope and magnify it, it's in the shape of the cross. That's where we get Colossians 1.17, in Him all things hold together. I feel like God is the molecule that holds our love together. He is the center of everything that we're doing. You're just with an amazing group of ladies that none of them judge you. They don't even see you for who you used to be. It's just really it's such a reminder of God's grace. Since its launch, the Laminin team has grown to a family of 21, all of them as beautiful as the pieces they make. Together they work, they pray, they overcome, and nothing can tarnish their newfound hope. It means a lot to me. Woo, I'm gonna get all teary-eyed. <laughs> because I feel very privileged to be able to say that God is using me in this way to help all of these women. Everybody deserves a second chance, and sometimes we deserve third, fourth, and fifth chances, because that's how our God is. He loves us no matter what. It's more than a job. It's more than getting paid a wage. I couldn't calculate in dollars what it's done for me. These people love me. I am somebody. I am worthy of doing this. I love it. Who can go to work and say, I love the atmosphere that I work in? <laughs> it's like a, a small little family. A bunch of sisters I never had. To see the progress that they've made and them laughing with each other and hugging and crying and just being normal, you know, normal girls together. I sometimes just look back in awe that I can't believe this is happening. Who could have brought all of these different women together? Only God. It's time now to turn to our friends at Focus on the Family's Entertainment Review Department. They're bringing us a review of the new film, Finding Dory. Don't cry, Mommy. Don't cry. 
the movie Finding Dory isn't so much about finding a certain blue tang fish with short-term memory problems as it is about helping her find her loving mom and dad. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. Where are they? It turns out that Dory lost them when she was but a mere minnow. And after dredging up a strange snippet of caught in the undertow memory one day, <gasps> my mom, my dad, I have a family. We will never forget you, Dory. What if I forget you? I miss them. She is suddenly certain that she can locate her lost loved ones. So she gently tail twists friends Marlin and Nemo into joining her on a trip to a place in California called the Marine Life Institute. Even after making that trek, though, Dory's quest will require the help of some new oddball aquatic friends. A grumpy octopus named Hank gives Dory a tentacled hand, and a trio of sea lions, a pair of whales, and a seabird with a few quirky brain issues all her own join in as well. It's all fins on deck to help Dory find the family she almost forgot. Dad! She should just pick two and let's go. Dad. This sequel to the beloved Pixar pick Finding Nemo may not be everything the original was, but it certainly packs the same endearing and colorful animation splash. There are a few moments here of light peril that parents should be aware of. But this is a film that lauds loving families and dear friends. And it even talks about the life-shaping impact parents can have on kids with special needs. So I'm giving the delightful and unforgettable Finding Dory a heartfelt five purple shells out of five for family friendliness. For a full detailed review, visit us at PluggedIn.com. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Cheryl Wilhelmy for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.